Marie, isn't the soup boiling yet? Not yet, madam. Well, it ought to be. You haven't tended the fire properly, child. But, madam, you yourself made the fire up. Don't answer me back like that. It is rude. Yes, madam. Then don't let me have to rebuke you again. No, madam. I wonder where my brother can be. It is after eleven o'clock, and no sign of him. Marie. Yes, madam. Did Monsignor the Bishop leave any message for me? No, madam. Did he tell you where he was going? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Then why haven't you told me? Stupid. Madam didn't ask me. But that is no reason for your not telling me, is it? Madam said only this morning I was not to chatter, so I thought. Ah, oh, mon dieu. You thought? Ah, oh, it is hopeless. Yes, madam. Don't keep saying yes, madam. Like a parrot. Nincompoop. No, madam. Well, where did Monsignor say he was going? To my mother's, madam. To your mother's indeed. And why, pray? Monsignor asked me how she was, and I told him she was feeling poorly. You told him she was feeling poorly, did you? And so my brother is to be kept out of his bed, and go without his supper. Because you told him, she was feeling poorly. There's gratitude for you. Madam, the soup is boiling. Then pour it out, fool, and don't chatter. No, no. Not like that. Here, let me do it. And did you put the salt cellars on the table? The silver ones? The silver ones, madam? Yes, the silver ones. Are you deaf, as well as stupid? They are sold, madam. Sold. Sold. Are you mad? Who sold them? Why were they sold? Monsignor the Bishop told me this afternoon, while you were out, to take them to Monsieur Gervais, who has often admired them, and sell them for as much as I could. But you had no right to do so without asking me. But, madam, Monsignor the Bishop told me. Monsignor the Bishop is a, ahem. But, but, what can he have wanted with the money? Pardon, madam, but I think it was for Mera Gringoire. Mare Gringoire indeed. Mare Gringoire. What, the old witch? Who lives at the top of the hill, and who says she is bedridden, because she is too lazy, to do any work? And what did Mare Gringoire want with the money, pray? Madam, it was for the rent. The bailiff would not wait any longer, and threatened to turn her out today if it were not paid, so she sent little Jean to Monsignor to ask for help, and... Oh mon dieu! It is hopeless, hopeless. We shall have nothing left. His estate is sold, his savings have gone. His furniture, everything. Were it not for my little dot, we should starve, and now my beautiful, beautiful, salt cellars, ah, it is too much, too much. <laughs> Madam, I am sorry, if I had known. Sorry? And why, pray? If Monsignor the Bishop chooses to sell his salt cellars, he may do so, I suppose. Go and wash your hands. They are disgracefully dirty. Yes, madam. Ah, how nice and warm it is in here. It is worth going out in the cold, for the sake of the comfort of coming in. Thank you, dear. Why, what is the matter? You have been crying. Marie being troublesome, eh? Ah. No, it wasn't Marie, but, but. Well, well, you shall tell me presently. Marie, my child, run home now, your mother is better. I have prayed with her, and the doctor has been. Run home. And, Marie, let yourself in quietly, in case your mother is asleep. Oh thanks, thanks, Monsignor. Here, Marie, take my comforter, it will keep you warm. It is very cold tonight. Oh no, Monsignor. What nonsense, brother, 
She is young, she won't hurt. Ah, Hassan, you have not been out, you don't know how cold it has become. Here, Marie, let me put it on for you. There. Run along, little one. Brother, I have no patience with you. There, sit down and take your soup, it has been waiting ever so long. And if it is spoiled, it serves you right. It smells delicious. I'm sure Marie's mother is not so ill, that you need have stayed out, on such a night as this. I believe those people pretend to be ill, just to have the bishop call on them. They have no thought of the bishop. It is kind of them to want to see me. Well for my part, I believe that charity begins at home. And so you make me this delicious soup. You are very good to me, sister. Good to you, yes. I should think so. I should like to know where you would be, without me to look after you. The dupe of every idle scamp, or lying old woman in the parish. If people lie to me, they are poorer, not I. But it is ridiculous, you will soon have nothing left. You give away everything, everything. My dear, there is so much suffering in the world, and I can do so little, <sighs> so very little. Suffering, yes, but you never think of the suffering you cause to those who love you best, the suffering you cause to me. You, sister dear, have I hurt you? Ah, I remember you had been crying. Was it my fault? I didn't mean to hurt you. I am sorry. Sorry. Yes. Sorry won't mend it. Hum. Oh, do go on eating your soup, before it gets cold. Very well, dear. But, tell me. You are like a child, I can't trust you out of my sight. No sooner is my back turned, than you get the little minx Marie, to sell the silver salt cellars. Ah, yes, the salt cellars. It is a pity. You, you were proud of them. Proud of them, why, they have been in our family for years. Yes, it is a pity, they were beautiful, but still, dear. One can eat salt out of China just as well. Yes, or meat off the floor, I suppose. Oh, it's coming to that. And as for that old wretch, Mayor Grungwa, I wonder she had the audacity, to send here, again. The last time I saw her, I gave her such a talking to, that it ought to have had some effect. Yes, I offered to take her in here, for a day or two, but she seemed to think it might distress you. Distress me. And the bailiff, who is a very just man, would not wait longer for the rent. So, so, you see, I had to pay it. You had to pay it. Yes, and you see, I had no money, so I had to dispose of the salt cellars. It was fortunate I had them, wasn't it? Uh -huh. But, I'm sorry, I have grieved you. Oh, go on. Go on. You are incorrigible. You'll sell your candlesticks next. No, no, sister. Not my candlesticks. Oh, why not? They would pay somebody's rent, I suppose. Ah, you are good, sister, to think of that. But, but I don't want to sell them. You see, here, my mother gave them to me, on, on her deathbed, just after you were born. And, and she asked me to keep them, in remembrance of her. So I would like to keep them, but perhaps it is a sin to set such store by them. Brother, brother, you will break my heart. <laughs> there. Don't say anything more. Kiss me, and give me your blessing. I'm going to bed. Don't sit up too long, and tie your eyes. No, dear. Good night. They would pay somebody's rent. It was kind of her to think of that. you are a dead man. But, my friend, as you see, I am reading. Why should I call out? Can I help you in any way? I want food. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything for three days. Give me food quickly. Quickly. Curse you. But certainly, my son, you shall have food. 
I will ask my sister for the keys of the cupboard. Sit down. None of that, my friend. I'm too old a bird to be caught with chaff. You would ask your sister for the keys, would you? A likely story. You would rouse the house too. Eh? <laughs> Good joke, truly. Come, where is the food? I want no keys. I have a wolf inside me tearing at my entrails, tearing me. Quick, tell me where the food is. I wish Possum would not lock the cupboard. Come, my friend, you have nothing to fear. My sister and I are alone here. How do I know that? Why I have just told you. I'm f I'll risk it, but mind, play me false and as sure as there are devils in hell, I'll drive my knife through your heart. I have nothing to lose. You have your soul to lose, my son, it is of more value than my heart. Possum, Possum? Yes, brother. Here is a poor traveler who is hungry. If you are not undressed will you come and open the cupboard, and I will give him some supper. What, at this time of night? A pretty business truly. Are we to have no sleep now? But to be at the beck and call of every ne'er-do-well who happens to pass? But, Possum, the traveler is hungry. Oh, very well, I am coming. Brother, what is he doing with that knife? The knife? Oh, well, you see, dear, perhaps he may have thought that. I, I had sold ours. Ha ha ha. Ha <laughs> ha. Brother, I am frightened. He glares at us like a wild beast. Hurry, I tell you. Give me food, or I'll stick my knife in you both and help myself. Give me the keys, for some. And now, dear. You may go to bed. Stop. Neither of you leave this room till I do. Possum, will you favor this gentleman with your company at supper? He evidently desires it. Very well, brother. Here is some cold pie, and a bottle of wine, and some bread. Put them on the table and stand below it so that I can see you. My knife is sharp. And as for forks, pa. Here, we don't use forks in prison. Prison? What was that? Why the devil do you leave the window unshuttered? And the door unbarred? So that anyone can come in? That is why they are left open. While they are shut now. For the first time in 30 years. Oh, my nice clean floor. You're not afraid of thieves? I am sorry for them. Sorry for them. <laughs> That's a good one. Sorry for them. <laughs> what the devil are you? I am a bishop. <laughs> a bishop. Holy Virgin, a bishop. Well, I'm damned. I hope you may escape that, my son. Possum, you may leave us. This gentleman will excuse you. Leave you with? Please. My friend and I can talk more. Free then. What's that? Leave us. Yes, yes, leave us. Good night. I want to talk to the bishop. The bishop. <laughs> Good night, Possum. The Bishop. <laughs> well, I am. Do you know what I am? 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 I think one who has suffered much. Suffered? Suffered? My God. Yes. <laughs> but that's a long time ago. <laughs> that was when I was a man. Now I'm not a man. Now I'm a number. Number 15729. And I've lived in hell for 10 years. Tell me about it. About hell. Why? Do you want to tell the police? To set them on my track? No. 
I will not tell the police. I believe you, but damn me if I know why. Tell me about the time, the time before you went, to, hell. It's so long ago, I forgot. But I had a little cottage. There were vines growing on it. They looked pretty with the evening sun on them, and... And there was a woman. She was. She must have been my wife. Yes. Yes, I remember. She was ill, we had no food. I could get no work, it was a bad year, and my wife, my Jeanette was ill, dying. So I stole to buy her food. They caught me. I pleaded to them, I told them why I stole, but they laughed at me. And I was sentenced to 10 years in the prison hulks. 10 years in hell. The night I was sentenced, the jailer told me. He told me Jeanette was dead. <laughs> ah, damn them, damn them. God curse them all. <laughs> now tell me about the prison ship, about hell. Tell you about it? Look here, it was a man once. I'm a beast now, and they made me what I am. They chained me up like a wild animal. They lashed me like a hound. I fed on hill. I was covered with vermin. I slept on boards and I complained. And they lashed me again. For 10 years, 10 years. Oh God. They took away my name. They took away my soul. And they gave me a devil in its place. But one day they were careless. One day they forgot to chain up their wild beast. And he escaped. He was free. That was six weeks ago. I was free. Free to starve. To starve? Yes, to starve. They feed you in hell. But when you escape from it you starve. They were hunting me everywhere. And I had no passport, no name. So I stole again, I stole these rags. I stole my food daily. I slept in the woods, in barns, anywhere. I dare not ask for work. I dare not go into a town to beg. So I stole and they have made me what I am. They have made me a thief. God curse them all. My son, you have suffered much. But there is hope for all. Hope. Hope. <laughs> you have walked far, you are tired. Lie down and sleep on the couch there, and I will get you some coverings. And if anyone comes? No one will come, but if they do, are you not my friend? Your friend? They will not molest the bishop's friend. The bishop's friend. I will get the coverings. The bishop's friend. Silver. By God. And heavy. What a prize. Ah, uh, you are admiring my candlesticks. I am proud of them. They were a gift from my mother. A little too handsome for this poor cottage perhaps, but all I have to remind me of her. Your bed is ready. Will you lie down now? Yes, yes, I'll lie down now. Look here. Why the devil are you key, kind, to me? What do you want, eh? I want you to have a good sleep, my friend. I believe you want to convert me. Save my soul, don't you call it? Well, it's no good, see? I don't want any damned religion. As for the church, bah. I hate the church. That is a pity, my son, as the church does not hate you. You are going to try to convert me. Oh. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> no, no. Monsignor the Bishop, I don't want any of your faith, hope, and charity, see? So anything you do for me, you're doing to the devil, understand? One must do a great deal for the devil, in order to do a little for God. I don't want any damned religion, I tell you. Won't you lie down now? It is late. Well, all right. But I won't be preached at. I, I, you're sure no one will come? I don't think they will, but if they do, you yourself, have locked the door. Ah. Uh, I wonder if it's safe? Here. You go to bed. I'll cover myself. Go on. I tell you. Good night, my son. No lock, of course. Curse it. I'll have another. Worth hundreds, I'll warrant.
if I had these turned into money, it'd start me fair. Huff. The old boy's fond of them too, said his mother gave him them. His mother, yes. They didn't think of my mother, when they sent me to hell. He was kind to me too. But what's a bishop for? Except to be kind to you. Here, cheer up. My hearty. You getting soft. God. Wouldn't my chainmates laugh? To see 15729 hesitating, about collaring the plunder, because he felt good. Good. <laughs> oh my god. Good. <laughs> 15729 getting soft. That's a good one. <laughs> no, I'll take his candlesticks and go. If I stay here, he'll preach at me in the morning, and I'll get soft. Damn him. And his preaching too. Here goes. Who's there? Who's there, I say? Am I to get no sleep tonight? Who's there, I say? I'm sure I heard the door shut. No one here? The candlesticks. The candlesticks. They are gone. Brother. Brother. Come out. Fire. Murder. Thieves. What is it? Dear? What is it? What is the matter? He has gone. The man with the hungry eyes has gone. And he has taken your candlesticks. Not my candlesticks. Sister. Surely not those. <laughs> ah. That is hard. Very hard. I, I, he might have left me those. They were all I had. <laughs> well, but go and inform the police. He can't have gone far. They will soon catch him. And you'll get the candlesticks back again. You don't deserve them, though. Leaving them about with a man like that in the house. You are right, Possum. It was my fault. I led him into temptation. Oh nonsense. Led him into temptation indeed. The man is a thief, a common scoundrelly thief. I knew at the moment I saw him, go and inform the police, or I will. And have him sent back to prison. Sent back to hell. No person. It is a just punishment for me, I set too great store by them. It was a sin. My punishment is just. But, oh God. It is hard. It is very hard. No, brother, you are wrong. If you won't tell the police, I will. I will not stand by and see you robbed. I know you are my brother, and my bishop, and the best man in all France. But you are a fool. I tell you, a child, and I will not have your goodness abused. I shall go and inform the police. Stop. Possum? The candlesticks were mine, they are his now. It is better so. He has more need of them than I. My mother would have wished it so, had she been here. What? Monsignor. Monsignor. We have something for you, may we enter? Enter, my son. Ah, so they have caught you. Villain. Have they? Yes, madam. We found this scoundrel slinking along the road, and as he wouldn't give any account of himself, we arrested him, on suspicion. Holy Virgin! Isn't he strong? And didn't he struggle? While we were securing him, these candlesticks fell out of his pockets. I remembered the candlesticks of Monsignor the Bishop, so we brought him here, that you might identify them, and then, we'll lock him up. But... But I don't understand? This gentleman is my very good friend. Your friend, Monsignor. Holy Virgin. Well... Yes. My friend. He did me the honor to sup with me tonight. And I, I have given him the candlesticks. You gave him? Him? Your candlesticks? Holy Virgin. 
Remember, my son, that she is holy. Pardon, Monsignor. And now, I think you may let your prisoner go. But he won't show me his papers, he won't tell me who he is. I have told you, he is my friend. Yes, that's all very well, but... He is your bishop's friend, surely that is enough. Well, but... Surely. I, I, huh. Loose the prisoner. Right about turn. Quick march. You told them you had given me the candlesticks. Given me them, by God. Oh you scoundrel, you pitiful scoundrel, you come here and are fed, and warmed. And, and you thief, steal from your benefactor. Oh you blackguard. Cussum, you are overwrought. Go to your room. What? And leave you with him to be cheated again? Perhaps murdered? No, I will not. Cussum, leave us. I wish it. Well, if I must go, at least I'll take the candlesticks with me. Cussum, place the candlesticks on that table, and leave us. I will not. I, your bishop. Command it. <sighs> Monsignor. I'm glad I didn't get away with them. Curse me, I am. I'm glad. Now, won't you sleep here? See? Your bed is ready. No. 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 I daren't, I daren't. Besides I must go on, I must get to Paris, it is big. And I. I can be lost there. They won't find me there. And I must travel at night. Do you understand? I see, you must travel by night. I didn't believe there was any good in the world. One doesn't when one has been in hell. But somehow, I know you're good. And, and it's a queer thing to ask, but, but could you, would you, bless me, before I go, I, I think it would help me, I, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <laughs> Good night. Stay, my son, you have forgotten your property. You mean me? You want me to take them? Please. They may help you. And, my son, there is a path through the woods, at the back of this cottage, which leads to Paris. It is a very lonely path, and I have noticed that my good friends, the gendarmes, do not like lonely paths at night. It is curious. Ah, oh, thanks, thanks, Monsignor. I, I. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm a fool, proud to cry. But somehow, you have made me feel that, that it is just as if, something had come into me. As if I were a man again, and not a wild beast. Always remember, my son, that this poor body, is the temple of the living God. The temple of the living God. I'll remember, the temple of the living God. The temple of the living God. The Beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our This audio lesson of the Bishop's Candlesticks was created by the Lighthouse School, Kang Pope P, with AI voiceover by Speechelo. Thank you.